Right now, King 5 presents a special live event to support local kids. Tonight, you can help make sure their future is a healthy one. Welcome to Growing Wellness in Odessa Brown Children's Clinic and Seattle Children's Special. Welcome, we are live from Seattle Children's for a very special cause. Tonight, you're gonna have the opportunity to help with children in our area and their health and help out their families as well. But not only that, you're gonna be able to help raise the standard for growing wellness all across the country. Thanks for joining us, I'm Jim Dever. And I'm Jean Anderson. I've gone from television anchor to <laughs> live television and feedback, <laughs> television anchor to advocate, and I'm a big advocate advocate for kids and for those served by Seattle Children's Hospital and the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. At the clinic I've seen the brightest minds and the biggest hearts treat the whole child and by that I mean the physical needs, mental, nutritional, dental, everything a child needs in one visit, one place, regardless of the child or family's ability to pay. I think this clinic is a wonderful thing for our community. I'm a big supporter of Odessa Brown and the whole community uh, is served by Odessa Brown because it has partnerships throughout the community. It also relies on the community for support. And that's where you come in tonight. Would you like a place to put your activism? You've been looking, right? Well, it's the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. We'll take you there tonight and we'll tell you about a new adventure for the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. Stay with us for this look at Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. Jim? Thanks, Jean. And we have some amazing volunteers standing by to answer the phones in here. Also, a big special room full of volunteers right over here. You're going to hear some stories about Odessa Brown Children's Clinic, and you're going to have these phones ringing off the hook very soon. I guarantee it. Look how hard it is for me to even get into this room. There are so many people in here. Here are the phone numbers, 206-987-1061 or toll-free, 866-987-1061. There's going to be some really special times during the night. Why aren't the phones ringing yet? Come on! There are going to be some very special times during the night, too, when we have special friends out in the community who will match your donation. And that, mean, that means your money is going to go really, really far. Also, if you like to do things online, we have a ridiculously long web address that you can go to. You can also donate by going to give2.seattlechildrens.org slash OBCC special. It's that simple. But once again, you can get on the phone line, 206-987-1061, and help out with the cause. Jean? All right, Jim, thank you. I'm joined now by Dr. Ben Danielson, who's the medical director of the Odessa Brown Clinic in the central area, and a kind of local hero on the local health scene, I think that's fair to say. Uh, he was a foster child himself and brings a special understanding to some of the kids that Odessa Brown serves. So Dr. Danielson, in your view, what is so special about Odessa Brown Children's Clinic? And tell us about the new adventure that's on the plans for the future. All right, thank you. And first, I just have to say, I'm so thankful for everything that you've done to help support the clinic and uh, raise its profile in the community writ large. It's amazing. Good, thank you. I am not a hero, uh, but I work for this amazing place that is uh, built on the shoulders of great heroes. Women who helped a community become stronger, more uh, intact, support its youngest members, and promote health. And uh, that's just an incredible privilege for me to be a part of. We work with amazing people. You're gonna hear some great stories tonight. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see some of the people who really make this clinic what it is. And also you're gonna learn about this community that we just cherish, that we care so much about serving. When we talk about growing wellness and we talk about expanding plans for Odessa Brown, can you tell us a little bit about what's on the drawing board? Sure. So we're 48 years long now in our history, and we've been serving the central area for a long time with medical and dental and mental health services in addition to nutrition and working with schools and things like that. But we're at this crossroads now that's really important to think about. Our communities are changing really fast. Their needs are changing really fast. We see uh, populations moving further south, it's harder to get to us, especially for our low-income families. So we need to think big and think about action steps. What we've come to is really this opportunity to redevelop our work, to make ourselves more accessible, one, so that we'll have more access to South King County. Number two, communities are telling us they need mental health services. All communities say that, ours especially. So we're going to be building out our community mental health services. Three, we have this history of partnerships that's really exciting. 
and we want to go really deeply into that. We're going to work with schools and food banks and libraries and community centers. We're going to bring our services to the community so we're not sort of waiting in our clinic for people to come to us. And then we're going to bring in these innovative programs. We've been talking about these exciting things like what would it mean to have a mindfulness program in a children's clinic? Think about that and what it would do for families who are stressed and the toxic exposures that kids face. We're going to do things like having a sports and physical activity program that might bring the best rehab services, but also talk about physical literacy movement as a part of health. So we'll talk about some of these partnerships oh, yeah. and the outreach into the community as this, as this program goes on tonight. But I wanted to thank you for your leadership and health in the community. You may not think you're a hero, but you're a real leader and a real partner to so many organizations in this community that the Odessa Brown patients need and that the whole community needs. So thank you. Thank you. It's a privilege. And we'll check with you a little bit later in the program. In the thank meantime, you. we're going to take you inside the clinic and give you a look at what we really mean by growing wellness. When a family needs help, we can serve them in so many different ways. There really isn't anybody else in this neighborhood or in this general vicinity who's providing that care. When neighbors are in need, Dr. Shakita Bell is there. I love to be able to meet a family and hear about what's going on and to be able to help them. Oh, you have so many admirers! I came from a very similar community in Minnesota and when I walk in a room, I feel like I'm treating my sister and my nephew and my niece and I feel like I see those faces reflected in my patients. She, you know, ask how I'm doing, um, anything new like in our lives and, um, you know, she'll ask about my job and how things are going with that. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Most of us live near or in the community that we serve or came from this community. Dr. Bell's job extends well beyond routine checkups. I bet you can do it. Treating children and supporting families, the Odessa Brown Clinic also promotes wellness through dental services, mental health, and nutrition. All of those things in one building is such an amazing asset for people to just come to one place and get all their needs met. For this doctor, it's a dream job. I get filled up by those little kids' smiles. It's really rare for people to wake up and want to go to work, and I'm really lucky that I get to work in a place where we all feel that way. That's priceless. Okay, now it's your chance to join the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic team. We're standing by, waiting for your calls. Actually, the phones are pretty full right now, which is great, but we have dozens of other people standing by, waiting to take your calls as well at 206-987-1061. And if you do it in the next two minutes, start the clock. This is exciting. Delta Airlines will match your pledge up to $5,000. So get on the phone now, up to the, for the next one minute and 52 seconds, you will be doubling the amount that you give us. Remember, Odessa Brown Children's Clinic handles everything from routine checkups to very serious medical issues, but they can only do it with your help. So please get on the phone, 206-987-1061 or toll free, 866-987-1061. Call now and join the team. Jean? Jim, thank you. So when we talk about expanding partnerships throughout the community and growing the work of Odessa Brown outside the walls of the clinic, here's an example of what we're talking about. The Garfield High School Teen Health Clinic. Its partner and its supporter is the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. We'll take you inside, take a look. For more than 20 years, the Teen Health Center at Seattle's Garfield High School has been a lifeline for students. Well, I think it's been a place where they can feel safe and um, call their own. Um, they take ownership over the clinic. Providing patients with medical and mental health care with the help of Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. Okay, go ahead, take some nice deep breaths. Services that Isabella Roland Reed took advantage of during a difficult junior year. I feel like I didn't have to do everything on my own. I had like a support system at Garfield that could like help me out whatever I needed. I really love working with adolescents. Um, I'm just always amazed of how much they're, um, they open up and are really honest. And I think part of that is giving them the space where they feel really comfortable and safe. Oriana Sowers-Dilly is one of the two nurse practitioners splitting time between the Teen Health Center and Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. Our demographics here at Garfield um, is really, really a large variety, and so some students will use us as like a primary care setting, so they will not have other healthcare other places. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? 
The Teen Health Center offers a safe, convenient location at no cost to the students. I'm able to come down and make an appointment rather than having to worry about going out to make an appointment when it's right here. I come to school every day, so I have a like almost a built-in doctor's office. Helping them live a happier, healthier life. The health center is great. I love it. You're going to love it, too, because we're here with the coach of the Supersonics championship basketball team in 1979, Lenny Wilkins. And Lenny, it's a pleasure to have you here. And it's a pleasure, I think, for the audience to hear your association with Odessa Brown Clinic, how you got involved. So how'd you get there in the first place? <laughs> well, Jean, uh, in 1969, I was traded here, and I came <laughs> kicking and screaming. But once I got here, I started to meet some wonderful people. And one of them was a gal by the name of Freddie Mae Gautier, who was very active in the community. I got to meet Dr. Blanche Levizio, who at the time was the medical director of the Odessa Brown Clinic. Went over, saw it, met the people there, watched how they treated young people. And I'm all about young people. Uh, they're tomorrow's doctors, lawyers. Uh, they're our future. And so it was a way to give back in the community, to be involved and see uh, Dr. Levizio treated all these young people uh, with dignity and let them believe that they could be somebody. So one of the things I hear you say about Odessa Brown Children's Clinic often is the diverse uh, population it serves and what attracts you about that kind of diversity in Seattle. Well, we're a diverse, not only a diverse community, we're a diverse world. I mean, and you know, that's the way it is. And so when you grow up in an area and you have a chance to give back to the community, uh, to people, irregardless of their ability uh, financially. That, that's a wonderful thing. So to give back to the community, to see that happening, uh, all types of people come to the clinic. What, it, what inspires you when you go into the clinic? Uh, when I go in there, I see uh, happy faces. <laughs> the young people aren't intimidated, they're not afraid, okay? They look forward to it. And, you know, we have a great medical director there named right now, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Ben Danielson. Ben, ben has done a wonderful job. And these young people look up to him. They feel like this is a safe, secure place for them. And so when they come in there, there isn't any fear. One of the things that strikes me about your presence in this community and your strong support of Odessa Brown, I remember them saying, well, if we have another clinic somewhere else, you said, we're always going to have Odessa Brown in the central area. We have a footprint there that's historic and we're going to keep it there. And I think that also is the spirit of Odessa Brown, is the history and the presence in that community as we think about moving another clinic farther south, right? Well, yes, and uh, because that's where it all began. And I think that uh, people should remember and know that. I think to expand south and have something else there, that's wonderful too because we're trying to reach the whole community. And as the community spreads out, we need to be able to tap into that. So to have another place, that's fine. But Odessa Brown will always be there. Lenny, we want to thank you for your support of Odessa Brown and for your explaining to people what's so wonderful about the place. Keep supporting it. Thank you very much. I, I intend to do that. And bring too. a basketball team back to Seattle. Yeah, all right. We're working on that one, too. <laughs> so we have a great family that's been supported by Odessa Brown Children's Clinic, and Jim is with them now. Jim? Thanks, Gene. We are, uh, we are over at the phone bank area right now. Just a little reminder, pick up the phone and call 206-987-1061. You guys look a little lonely right now. My goodness, all the phones are ringing in the other room. They're not ringing in this room. That's right. Call me. Ring me up, baby. Uh, also, 866-987-1061. And right now, I'd like to introduce you to Sprout and Isaac Hochberg. Sprout, how did, how did Isaac come into your life? Isaac came to me as a foster child when he was four and a half, so about 10 years ago. I got a call at 4.30 in the afternoon, and he showed up 7.30 that night. Oh, my goodness. And has never left. And that was how long ago? 10 years. 10 years ago, okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you would even remember that. How old are you now? I'm 14 now. 14, yeah. so just a vague memory probably in the, the you, back of your you mind there you somewhere, came, right? Kinda. Yeah. One well, thing the, you the probably remember well, though, is going to Odessa Brown Children's yeah. Clinic. How has the clinic uh, affected your lives? Well, the clinic has been everything as far as health care goes. Um, when you get a foster child in your home, you have to take them to get a checkup within the first week. Mm -hmm. And my doctor's office wouldn't see Isaac because he was on Medicaid. And mm -hmm. so I called Odessa Brown on a Monday morning. He came on a Friday. 
and um, I explained that I had a foster child, and they said, when can you come in? Mm. And so we came in on Wednesday, and we've been going there ever since. They've been everything for us. Yeah, that's one of the things that's wonderful about Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. No matter any family's ability to pay, mm -hmm. they are welcome to come in. The idea is to make sure we have as healthy a, a community as possible. How do you like the doctors there? Oh, they're awesome. They yeah? give good shots. <laughs> <laughs> right, is that going to happen tonight? May we have a few oh. around? Maybe we can arrange that for you. What does Dr. Danielson mean to you, Isaac? Uh, he's a good person, a good... Um, you know, he's the best doctor, you know, for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's always been there for me, you know, even through the hard times, the good times. He's always been there for, like, if I've had some advice I needed, mm -hmm. you know. not just He's not just there to be a doctor. He's also there to be, you know, your friend, you know, a person who has your back. That's great. I have not yet heard anything bad about Dr. Ben. He, and the thing is, the guy is tall and good looking too. It's, <laughs> it's so annoying because I'll be interviewing him a little bit later on in tonight's show and you're gonna see exactly what I mean. He's gonna tower over me in looks, intelligence, and, <laughs> and everything else. It's really disgusting. Get to the phone though. <laughs> And dial right now, 206-987-1061 or 866-987-1061. And Isaac, you're going to be helping us with the countdown clock for our next match coming up very soon. That helps you double your money thanks to some really caring people in the community who are helping us do that. Jean? Jim, thank you. And um, Isaac and Sprout, thank you very much. And um, that was a, a great way to feel the warmth that you feel when you walk into the Odessa Brown Clinic. Great job. So I want to give you um, a, a little insight into who was Odessa Brown. Strange name, wonderful place. Who was she? Take a look. Odessa Brown lived in Chicago during the Depression. Quality health care was hard to come by. At one visit to a Chicago area hospital, she was turned away because she couldn't pay. Brown reportedly said to the staff, I'm black and poor, but I will leave in peace so I can keep my dignity. Fast forward to the height of the 60s civil rights era when Odessa Brown was raising her four children in Seattle. She became a community organizer and fought to bring quality health care with dignity to children in Seattle's central area. Odessa Brown died in 1969 at the age of 49, but her advocacy brought the necessary federal money to Seattle to open a children's clinic, and it was named in Odessa Brown's memory. I'm joined now by pediatrician Dr. Tamani Coker, who's relatively new to Seattle, new to Children's Hospital, and new to the Odessa Brown Clinic, but her work fits perfectly with exactly what's going on at Odessa Brown. Your research, Tamani, is really about diversity and equity and access to health care, right? Tell right. Us, tell us how it impacts Odessa Brown, the research that you're doing. Yes, so, you know, I think one of the things that we realize about uh, really impacting children's health is that you have to think about the family as a whole. So we're really focused on child health and well-being and that's in the context of a family. So particularly when, they're, um, when parents are coming from low-income communities, they have a lot of different needs that, um, that deal with poverty and then just deal with being a parent. Being a parent is hard. So they need support, they need um, mental health, dental health, the clinician, there's a lot of resources that they need, and they need a team to provide those resources. So I have to share with the audience, one of the things that I was so impressed with when I heard you speak at a research institute gathering mm -hmm. was that, aside from all the wonderful things you are, MD, MBA, pediatrician, you're a mom. Yeah. And you had a sick child. Mm -hmm. And you talked about how that impacted your work as a doctor. Can you share that? Yes. So I have twin boys who are 11 and a five-year-old little girl who's a kindergartner. And a couple years ago, one of my twin boys got pretty sick, and he was in the hospital for three, three weeks. Uh, and I think at, at that time, I've always been on the outside of as the clinician providing the care. Um, but really, having a child that's in the hospital, you get to see the, really, the support that is so important from the whole team that provides care. It's not just the clinician or the pediatrician. It's the social worker, the nursing staff, the medical assistants, even just the people that you're encountering when you come to the cafeteria and you're getting the snack. One of the things that you said was when a whole phalanx of people come in, if doctors are on the rounds or they're teaching uh, other doctors, yeah. um, as a parent with a sick child, sometimes it's almost too much to take and that informed how you deal with other families and other That's right. patients. That's right. Uh, one of the experience that you're talking about, I was 
probably I had not slept for two days in the hospital with my son and the team came around and it was just too much and I just lost it. And so I realized that you don't know where that parent is at that time. They could be at the, the, the worst part of their stress or maybe they're not, but it's that part of when you in, encounter someone, asking them where they are and what they need and then meeting them right there and providing the services that they need that day. Thank you. Dr. Tamani Coker, I'd um, like to talk to you more. I know we will because you're new at Seattle Children's. Yes. We'll talk to you in the future. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jane. And good luck with your practice. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So you see the warmth and the care that doctors bring because they work inside the clinic, they work outside in the community, and just like so many of us, they're parents too. They really understand. It's a pleasure to have you with us. It Thanks, is a pleasure Jane. to have you here. We talked about the partnerships that Odessa Brown has, partnerships that help it do its work that's not just medical, sometimes it's dental. Did you know, for example, 40% of the kids in Washington State show up in first grade with tooth decay that might prevent them from eating, sleeping, certainly studying and prospering? Take a look at what goes on in the dental clinic where people are so passionate about their work at Odessa Brown. Open. Really? Good job. Most people hate going to the dentist. So this is my air. Tavi knows what that's like. See? That's how it works, okay? Which is why she loves trying to make trips to the dentist a bright and happy time for kids. Are you still nervous? But for the team at Odessa Brown Children's Clinic, caring for these smiles can still lead to some pain. Little children have 20 teeth. I've pulled 18 teeth on a less than two-year-old before because of rampant decay. I'm a career community health dentist and I find this heartbreaking. I'm not tough and resolute. I'm, I, it's heartbreaking. That's why Dr. Jennings and her team have a mission to give kids the dental care their families can't afford. Alexis is just one of up to 75 kids seen here every day. Health equity is important here. Not everybody has a fair seat at the table, and so we want to make sure that, that we level the playing field and that everyone's welcome. The clinic goes a long way to make this feel like home, but this home is overdue for upgrades. Our chairs are old. Uh, everything we do have is a little bit old and patched. We want some more technology. We have paper charts, which is horrifying in the, the, the medical world. What they lack in resources, they make up for with passion. So you can use these at home too, okay? It helps your teeth. I just like helping people in general, so just seeing the kids smile and the parents happy just to give them help and everything. But for Tavi, it's more than giving back to her patients and her community. It's about giving back to the team that helped her because she used to sit in these same chairs. Two of the assistants I remember when I was a kid, they actually still work here, so it's kind of it's kind of different seeing them like, oh, they used to work in my mouth, now I'm working with them. I'm one of those people who think if you were blessed with something, you should share it. And so this is the opportunity for me to share. This is a golden opportunity for me to share. This is an opportunity to help somebody that's going to be direct patient care. And it's important to, to share. It makes you feel good, and it, it really eases people's burden. It's not an equal world, and I think we have to help each other. Okay, now it's your chance to help support the dental clinic at Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. And if you do it in the next two minutes, your donation will be matched by the Washington Dental uh, Service Foundation. That's over the next two minutes, up to $5,000. And the clock is already running. Thank you, Isaac. The phones are ringing. Fantastic. Now let's hear from uh, Dr. Ben Danielson one more time. And Dr. Danielson, why is oral health so important for kids? That's incredibly important. It's foundational and it's really all about overall health. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't even spell overall health without oral health in mm -hmm. there. It's about uh, every part of your body. Your oral health uh, has a big influence on your infectious disease issues, on your heart, on your blood pressure, on your mental health. You don't have good oral health, you don't have good nutrition. If you don't have good oral health, your teeth hurt you when you're in school and you're not learning. It's Oral interesting how many, it. yeah. how many more things it affects than just what's in your mouth, right? Right. right. Um, and is there any way to keep kids from getting cavities, or do kids just automatically get cavities? Oh no, it's it's incredibly preventable. That's that's the amazing thing about oral health. A lot of people don't know that oral health is so related to an infection. It's really about bacteria in your mouth. Those bacteria can be spread from 
from a parent to a child, from uh, people in a household. So right away you know that you can prevent that spread mm -hmm. and prevent oral health problems that way. Interesting. So what are some of the precautions parents can take so that their kids have better oral health? Yeah. One of my favorite things and what we hope to do in our new clinic is to really start working during pregnancy and even before a child is born. Studies show that if you improve the oral health of a parent even before a child is born, then that child's going to have better teeth when they grow up. No kidding. Yeah. Oh. And on top of that, if you're a parent and you model good oral health practices, good oral mm -hmm. hygiene, that child is going to emulate that and they're going to have good oral health practices. It seems to me also that Odessa Brown Children's Clinic being a place that will take families and children regardless of their ability to right. pay financially. Oral health is, is probably on the front line of that, right? Because with, yeah. in, in terms of people's health care, it seems to me oral health might be one of the first things to go. You're waiting for your kid to get a fever or whatever right. else, but right. you're not maybe getting them in right away for preventive dental care. It's very true. Compared to a lot of the chronic diseases that we study in medical school, oral health disease dwarfs them in its scope and magnitude. Mm -hmm. It's really, really much more prevalent than people realize, and especially in low-income communities. Kids who face homelessness have rates of oral health disease that are much, much higher. Mm -hmm. And there are things you can do about that. So, also, uh, the clinic is a place of overall health. For instance, when a family comes in, you don't just treat the thing they come in the right. door for, right? right. You're right. looking for all these other things. So I'm, I'm guessing then that probably is a secondary reason you discover this this oral health issue with a lot of your patients. Absolutely. Like they might come in for, for instance, they hurt their foot or whatever. Right. So how does that process work? How do you evaluate when somebody comes through the door? Our dentists do such a good job of teaching people like me to be better at screening and looking and noticing when there are early problems. Uh -huh. They uh, encourage us to talk about oral health as part of any of these other visits. So it's kind of always on the table. Yeah. Um, even the nutrition visits, we talk about oral health. And we talk about the basic things you can do, like substitute water. Water's best. Mm -hmm. Water is better than any sugar sweetened drink you could find. And think about your snacks. You can use snacks that are healthier that you can chew that don't cause you to get cavities as much. Think about the foods that have sneaky sugar in them. Those mm -hmm. things that are uh, full of starch, full of carbohydrates that really do actually act the same as in any other sugar. Yeah. Sneaky sugar. I've sneaky learned, my, I've learned a new term. Yeah. term. Thanks so much, Dr. Danson. Absolutely. And back to you, Jean. <laughs> Jim, thank you. Keep those phones ringing. We need the help at Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. We tell you how creative they are and how they reach beyond the normal things that doctors might ask kids about. One of the things they ask about is nutrition. What kind of food are you getting at home? What kind of food do you get on the weekends if you don't get food at school? Well, in addition to the prescriptions they'll hand out, they'll hand out produce coupons. Always concerned about nutrition. Take a look at this program. You tried these ones before, guys? No. Should we take one of this? Yeah. Sure. Right. When Rocio Contreras takes her children shopping now, it's an adventure through the produce aisles. We've been trying a lot of new vegetables like kale that they never had it before, but now they love it. Yeah, they love kale now. All thanks to this, a $10 coupon funded by a federal grant. So this is an example of one of the coupons that we're giving out. Dr. Lena Liu heads up Seattle Children's Obesity Program. One of the things that we find that a lot of families struggle with is just having enough money to buy fresh fruits and vegetables. As far as we can tell, the response has been great. Sarah Osborne with Safeway says customers are surprised how far that money will go. We know that you can have, eat healthy on a budget. And so the $10 produce prescriptions were really an avenue to educate them on how much fruits and vegetables they can buy for that $10. Mandarin. I think that bringing that component of food and nutrition to health is uh, critical. It's just critical. Do you prefer green? These children don't seem to need much convincing. Three? Three, okay. Let's do three. I prefer six. Amazing eating really fun, really enjoyable. That's what children should be feeling. They should be feeling love and fun. And mom feels good about what she's buying. That's the best part, yeah. They're really nutritious and yeah, they love fruits too, so it's awesome. You have a great day. Thank you. He's in charge of the mandarins. <laughs>
We, we keep talking about outreach into the community, and one of the people who makes that happen is Antoinette Lyons. Thank you for joining us, Antoinette. Thank you. It's an important part of what goes on at Odessa Brown, is yeah. that in order to provide health within the clinic setting, you need to take care of the health that happens outside, the environment or housing or legal problems. Yes. That's you, right? That's me, In yes. charge of all the outreach. How do you view your job? Oh, it's so fulfilling. It's one of those things where you always leave fulfilled at the end of the day because you're you're knowing that you're able to help a family. We're meeting families where they're at to provide them with the care that they need so then they can ultimately provide the best love to their child. And we know that when we talk about growing wellness, that's what's growing wellness for us. So what would some of the partnerships now and in the future include? So some of our partnerships is we are in the schools. We have um, a couple of different school-based health care centers, and that leads us to um, finding out so much about our families that, you know, they're struggling through homelessness, they're struggling through food insecurities, and so we're there supporting them and helping them with those resources with different food banks and with different resources for housing, and we're there with them throughout that process navigating what can be a very complex system and also what can be something of a scary system as well. It almost makes uh, Odessa Brown sound if it's a home away from home or an actual home for a lot of these kids and families. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they, I, um, something that's really funny is I always, I'm like, oh yeah, my kids are doing this, that, and the other. And they're like, your kids are like, well, no, 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 the kids that I work with, but then you take them on as being your, your kids, kids because then it gives you some ownership, but then it also it, to, it lets the, the families know that you're not alone in this. Like, we are here to help you. We're here to support you. We're here to work with you. You're not alone in it, in that, uh, the, but Odessa Brown also helped like 40,000 families last year, right? Yes, incredible. So that's a big family. It's a huge, <laughs> loving, wonderful family. And, and 50 years of history in the central area. So Amazing. when you move, um, in addition to the present clinic, when you move a little bit farther south, Will there be new partnerships, new places to expand, and new ways to expand your community outreach? Yeah, so something that's really fun that we do is we work with families that have families, um, it's called a Fit for You program, and it gives them the outlet for um, healthy exercise and nutrition. And so we are, we've had that program at Mega Everest Pool for a long time now. And so now recently, us moving further into South King County, we are establishing that part partnership with the Rainier Beach Community Center. And so that's led us to have more families who are involved in first time swimming, which is amazing. And then they we do a healthy nutrition snack and they get to meet other families in their neighborhood. And so we're expanding definitely into um, other areas further south and we're definitely looking forward to establishing stronger partnerships. We look forward to that too also. Yeah. Thank you, Antoinette. Thank you. And back to Jim, who's got somebody on the phone, right, Jim? Oh, there's lots of people on the phone. They are all sending in their donations, and that's what we want you to do to pledge right now at 206-987-1061 or toll-free 866. Actually, Isaac, hold up the sign for me, would you please? Right here, put it right in front of my face so everybody sees it. 866-987-1061. There it is right there, and we've reached a special milestone moment in tonight's broadcast. Delta Airlines, for the next two minutes, quick, Isaac, get to the clock. Delta Airlines, for the next two minutes, will match anything that you pledge for the next one minute and 54 seconds, to be exact. So now is the time to give and double your giving power right now. Thanks so much for your support. Back to you, Gene. All right, Jim, thank you. So we talk about the importance of physical fitness to keep somebody in good health. And we also talk about how the staff at Odessa Brown goes outside the walls to do their work. One example is a nurse that I met there named Joe Montgomery, who thought that there were some kids who couldn't play on the school football team or couldn't turn out for track, but they could certainly keep fit somehow. And she invented that somehow by starting a kind of circus for them where they could try and get fit. Take a look at the program called Sanka. From handstands to cartwheels and trapeze, Kids do it all at Seattle's School of Acrobatics and New Circus Arts, also known as Sanka. They're building a strong foundation for a lifetime of healthy physical activity. An important goal for Joe Montgomery, who's been a nurse practitioner at Odessa Brown Children's Clinic for the last 27 years. I was working with so many kids at Odessa Brown that did not have access to exercise. Joe helped open Sanka in 2004 with just five students. Today, 900 kids a week come here, 20% of them on scholarship. Because I've been with children so long, I thought, well, of course, if they can't afford to pay, we will, of course, provide scholarships. And Children's has helped support the school every year since we've opened. Nine years ago, Joe took on a new challenge when a patient's mother asked Joe to work with her wheelchair-bound son. 
I feel like together we figured out how to make things work for him. From there, Joe has worked with lots of kids with emotional and physical challenges, including Rene Munoz, who's blind. I asked the parents what sort of exercise he was doing and they looked at me strangely and I said, you know, he's, he's healthy, he's, he's active, able to be active, he just doesn't see. But how do you teach a child to do a handstand when they can't watch the instructor do it first? Or do a cartwheel when they can't grasp the concept of flipping themselves upside down? Sure, there's some special attention uh, for spotting and maybe explaining. Straight legs. Reach out far. I feel like their activities are only limited by the imagination of the instructor. Yeah, she encourages me, gives comments on what I could do better. Oh yeah, that was all by yourself. That was beautiful. Senka has become a second family for many of the students. Senka has just been this amazing community throughout my life. Naomi Martini came to Senka eight years ago as part of a therapy camp to help strengthen the right side of her body, which was left weakened after suffering a stroke at birth. She's been hooked ever since. I always say I stepped into Neverland because it was so amazing. Now she's Joe's assistant coach, teaching kids with her same disability. And what was really cool about it was I kind of got, I fell in love with Finca all over again because they were right where I was. <laughs> There's a self-confidence that comes with being able to do skills. And so a kid that learns how to do a handstand or learns how to juggle a little bit or can do some tricks on a trapeze is going to feel more confident in every aspect of their life. These are the children with cancer, diabetes, a rare immune disease. These are the doctors, and these are the researchers who, with support from generous donors, are unlocking the possibilities of the immune system to not just treat the diseases, but cure them completely. At Seattle Children's, compassionate care, generous donors, and breakthrough research come together every day. Learn more or donate at seattlechildrens.org. Hope. Care. Cure. And Jack, Jackie Sherris is one of those generous donors that you just heard about. Jackie, how did you first come to Odessa Brown? Well, Jean, I had a son who died in an accident many years ago. And, um, you know, I, at, at that time, I was really struggling, obviously, to get through his loss, but also thinking about a way that I could give back and take some of his memory and, um, and his spirit and contribute back to the community. So I looked around Seattle and looked at various uh, places where they were serving children, and Odessa Brown just came to the front of the pack immediately. It was such an amazing place even then, and that was 30 years ago when I visited. And when I was there recently, I saw the, the play area. Right. At Odessa Brown that you helped build for the clinic, right? which is a great memorial, I would think, for Ryan. Yes, having the play area there which children can enjoy, being able to provide funding throughout the last 30 years, which the clinic can use for books or toys or extra coats for kids or some of the things that children need besides the great health care that they're getting. It's been a real gift to me and my family. And uh, you've made a lot of great gifts to Odessa Brown. Thank so you. your background is actually in global health. And the clinic sometimes strikes me as a real sort of uh, another example in our community of a great global health organization because it serves such a diverse community. Is exactly. that how you see it? Exactly. You know, the, the, the principles that Odessa Brown lives by, which is quality care, making it available to families and, and children in a way that is acceptable to them, engaging the community, focusing on prevention, all of those things are fundamental around the world to global health. And um, Odessa Brown does it so beautifully and in such a, I think, special way that really, as I've said before, hasn't changed. Really, the, the spirit of what's done at Odessa Brown is the same as it was when I first met them. Why would you tell people who are listening uh, that they should also join the Odessa Brown family, that they should also mm. help support it? Um, Odessa Brown is a unique resource in Seattle. Um, you know, the quality of care that's provided, the attention to the community, the access to care for foster kids or kids who have, you know, some specific challenges. And that's all backed up by the power of Children's Hospital, you know, and this wonderful resource. Um, and then the people. You know, you've met Ben, you've met some of the other staff at, at Odessa Brown, and that spirit of caring and spirit of service and attention to quality 
is just, it's really special and you don't find it in too many places. Providing access to people regardless of their ability to pay. Absolutely. Treating people with respect, meeting people, as Antoinette said, meeting people where they are and accepting them for who they are and believing in the future of who they can be. Absolutely. I think wonderful watchwords. Yeah, wonderful. I would agree completely. Thank you for your support of Odessa Brown. Thank and you. And thanks for being with us tonight. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Jackie. We're back to the phone bank where we've got another match to talk about. Jim? Okay, well, there are a lot of reasons. There are a lot of reasons why people want to give. Uh, Jackie makes a wonderful tribute in honor of her son uh, to Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. The wonderful thing about the clinic is that it is not just whole child, it is whole family. The children show up there, they become friends with the staff, with the doctors. I've seen it with my own eyes. Uh, the child gets a book and so do their siblings. It's really a wonderful place and you are putting your money absolutely in the right place to help families right here in our community. Now, right now, you're gonna get a little more giving power thanks to a generous matching donation from Ms. Anonymous. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yes, an anonymous, an anonymous donor is pledging up to $5,000 to match every pledge that you make right now. Thank you, Isaac has started the clock for the next one minute and 51 seconds. So get on your phone, 206-987-1061 or toll free 866-987-1061. And for the next one minute and 38 seconds, your pledge will be doubled thanks to our anonymous, very generous donor. Thank you so much. It's been so great to hear the phones ringing. I'd like to hear these ring out here a little more. I think they ring in the, don't take it personally, they ring, they ring in the other room first, and then you get the overflow. So once they're ringing out here, we know things are really humming, oh, there and there they go right now. So thank you so much for getting on the phone at 206-978-1061 and 866-987-1061. There you go. Who do you, who do you have there? Wait, let's listen in on this for a second. See, I take your pledge. See how nice they are? They're very kind. What, who is it? Don't, don't, okay, we better not, you know what? I was about to give away someone's credit card information on the air. Just call, we'll, we'll keep your information private. I swear we will. Gene, back to you. Jim, thank you, and we'd like to thank Anonymous for that donation. That was very, very generous. Probably she knows Dr. E. Meritus. Okay, sorry about that. Mental health, a big focus of what goes on at the Odessa Brown Clinic. And they really do provide health, that's mental health, packaged within the physical health checkup that they offer at Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. Take a look at this aspect of Odessa Brown. Sayer Washington was a little kid with big problems. His parents had just split up, and there was so much more. My mom had cancer around the time that my dad was in jail. My dad went to jail actually on my 11th birthday. On your very birthday? Yeah. He remembers turmoil at school and confusion at home. I was gonna have more responsibilities and having to grow up like kinda on my own. He was probably anxious and just kinda wondering, you know, how to make out different things and how life would probably turn out for him. Marissa saw the stress and asked Sayer's pediatrician for help. He directed them to Odessa Brown's mental health services. Counselor Mark Fadul knew right away Sayer stood at a crucial turning point. A young kid in elementary school that is acting out because of all this pain. Importantly, the clinic puts no time limit on mental and emotional support for kids, seeing their young patients through whatever they face. Lots of kids are put in situations where, um, whether there's trauma, right, violence, drug abuse, um, food insecurity, housing insecurity, these are all the things that we see every day here. With Mark, Sayer found a safe place to express and examine his emotions. He would keep asking me to tell him about it, to talk to him about it, let my emotions come out. That outlet and the decision-making tools Sayer gained with Mark have turned into success at school and as a freshman football player at O'Day. He's protected a classmate from bullying, built new friendships, and become even closer with his mom. She just keeps telling me that she's proud of me for just getting on the right track 
and fighting, even though all the stuff that's happened to me. She just, that's what she tells me every day, that she's just proud of me. What makes you proud? Um, oh, you're gonna make me cry. Um, just kind of like how selfless he is. I mean, you know, you noticed it, and it's because he always thinks of other people before himself, and I love that about him. It could have turned out so differently. Sayer knows that. With Mark as a role model, he says he's learned an entirely new definition of manhood. You should speak your emotions. It takes, it takes a man to really tell somebody what he's feeling inside. This transformation, right, from him to be able to be labeled as a problem child to this amazing leader, right, um, it's a real tribute. We believe, all of us, his family, myself, he's a leader, he has a lot of goodness yet to come. Do you believe that? Yes, I definitely believe that. <laughs> he does. <laughs> it's good. And we're joined now by Mark Fadul and Zaire, and we'd like to thank you both for joining us tonight. And you've made a remarkable, wonderful journey together, haven't you? Absolutely. So, Mark, you're the therapist. Um, when you when you take on um, somebody else into your clinic, what are you thinking? Are you thinking like where have they been, or where are they now, or where can I take them? Yeah, I think it's more about being in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, now, one thing I'll say is this. Um, amazing young man was probably this tall when I first met him <laughs> and that's one thing about Odessa Brown that's so incredible is that the journey lasts for years right and uh, it really is about hearing what's happening in that moment with that family so many people are feeling so stressed and overwhelmed and isolated we want to make sure they feel like they have a home of refuge when they come to Odessa Brown Children's Club. So Zaire tell me where you are now um, I'm at O'Day, finishing yep. up my freshman year, going into sophomore year. Yep. And how's the football going? Football going is going good. Um, we're starting a new season in a couple of months, but right now I'm doing track. I'm running uh, 100 and 200. A two-sport athlete, or are there more too? Um, probably next year I'm probably going to go out for basketball as well. <laughs> the future's open, wide open, huh? Mm -hmm. And how are you feeling about your life? Um, I'm really, really, I'm feeling really good. Um, I've overcome a lot of co uh, obstacles, and I feel like that's an accomplishment for me. Mm -hmm. What does this man mean to you? Um, he means a lot. He's kind of like my uncle, like, because he's not my father, because he's not all up in my business like my dad, but he's still there to show a good role model for me, uh -huh. kind of like an uncle. Yeah. And what is that your meant for you, Mark? <laughs> oh, he's a blessing, like so many of the young people that we see and their families. Um, we talk so much about toxic stress, and really it's not about that. It exists, but it's about strength and resiliency. And you see that in his eyes, you see it in his mother's eyes, who happens to be here tonight. You see it in the community. There's so much leverage of strength and goodness that Adessa Brown uses, and it's there every day. You know, the word resilience comes up really often when you talk about Odessa Brown, and I know Dr. Danielson talks about it a lot, that you try to build that into a person and then watch that person go forward and flourish. That seems to be the kind of attitude that you take um, as somebody who's been at Odessa Brown and somebody who's a therapist there. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And is the demand for mental health now really extraordinarily high? It seems that all of us at this time are pretty stressed, not just in this community, but but everywhere. I think that, you know, we're seeing a big economic boom, but it's only really reaching a, a small segment of Seattle. There's a lot of folks having to work twice as hard to keep their standard of living, and that causes an incredible amount of stress. So I would agree. The, the need now is as great as I've ever seen it, and I've been at Seattle Children's for 20 years. <laughs> That's so true of so many people who were there at Children's. They're there for a long, long time. That's right. So when Odessa Brown moves farther south, presumably there'll be more space and more ability to meet the need in the community for mental health services. That's right. And one thing we talk about is going upstream. So we really want to make sure families are getting the best possible information and care early on. Early on. That's why we started a Birth to Five program and why partnership is absolutely um, essential. Mark, thank you. And Zaire, good luck to you. Thank Football, you. baseball, basketball, track. Keep up the good work. Thank you. All right, Jim, back to you. Thanks, Jean. All babies in Washington state are tested for certain inherited diseases. One of those is sickle cell anemia. It is a lifelong, incurable, chronic disease. And there's a special team at Odessa Brown Children's Clinic that is working around the clock to keep those kids healthy.
Okay, then just switch to your RI. Meet Celia Rose Cornelius, a 10-year-old with an eye on the future. I want to be a doctor and work here. Here is the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic, where Celia has been receiving treatment for sickle cell anemia since she was just a few months old. I feel like a normal kid. Even I forget it sometimes. Green. Hey guys. Hi. Hello, Dr. hello. Bender. Hey, <laughs> Celia. How are you, darling? Good. Sickle cell is an inherited red blood cell disorder. It's a chronic disease and more common among certain ethnic groups. Patients can suffer a lot of pain. What happens is under certain kinds of stress, the blood cells change shape and stop blood flow, and that stopping of blood flow can happen to any part of the body. At the Odessa Brown Children's Clinic, where 140 sickle cell kids get treatment, education and wraparound care is the key to helping patients and families manage the disease. It's learning how to prevent pain, how to deal with pain, what other things to look out for, for fever, stroke, lung problems. It's bringing in nursing, social work. It's working with the schools. It's, it's about looking at all aspects of life and how do you optimize it to avoid problems. That's why hour-long patient appointments are the norm here. And parents are given plenty of time to talk about concerns. And then the list. <laughs> In the list. My mother-in-law was talking about her ear and being dizziness, uh, course of the vomiting. She fell down, so she has a little scrape. Dr. Bender and his team are available 24-7 for patients and their families. Boiled down to, I can't imagine without Odessa Brown. We just need them. Families know they can call at any hour. We will listen, we will trust them. They know we're there for them which makes them feel more comfortable as they're going through this. This is the boy from Montana who needed an operation when his heart was the size of a strawberry. And this is the Seattle Children's researcher who created a 3D replica of his tiny heart before the surgery so the doctors wouldn't miss a beat. At Seattle Children's, clinical expertise, breakthrough research, and generous donors come together to do amazing things. Learn more or donate at seattlechildrens.org. Hope, care, cure. Okay, we are nearing the end of the program, but we do have one more exciting opportunity to double the power of your giving right now to help Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. Thanks to a $5,000 matching donation from Burns McCabe Foundation. So we're gonna start the clock. For the next two minutes, Burns McCabe Foundation is going to match you're giving right up to $5,000. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call 206-987-1061. You can see the number on the screen, somewhere on the screen. I don't see the screen like you do, you, you know where it is. Or 866-987-1061. I am curious what has brought, other, uh, other than my earpiece out of my ear, what has brought you here today, Deanna? Why are you here answering phones? So I'm really fortunate to be a Seattle Children's employee. I started in the cancer department and have been able to create a career here. And just the fact that um, I get to come to a place where everybody uh, is really focused on patients and families and supporting each other as employees. It's, uh, it's really wonderful to, uh, to see in the community as well as to uh, be a part of that. And that's the spirit of Odessa Brown Children's yes. Clinic as well. Absolutely. I have been out there. Have you been in the Odessa Brown Children's yes. Clinic? Yes. I make an effort to get out there, especially in celebration of June. It's an uh -huh. annual celebration there, recognizing um, that event and the experience of African Americans. And um, it's just fantastic. It's They're in the community. They know the community. They see kids grow up. And who doesn't want to doesn't want to see somebody grow up really healthy? All right. Well, thanks so much for being here. And I hope you get a lot of business. Yes, there yay, it goes. The phone you. is going. You, whoever you are, you're talking to Deanna right now. Hello. Thank you for calling Weird me. experience, isn't it? 206-987-1061 is the number to call or toll free 866-987-1061. I am not getting any communication uh, from the control room at the moment because the little thingy fell out of my ear. But if you would like me to toss it over to Jean now, I would be more than happy to. Jean? All right. Jim, thank you. And we're once again joined by Dr. Ben Danielson, who is the medical director at uh, Odessa Brown Children's Clinic and who is a big part of the group leading the charge for building the new clinic a little bit farther south. We're not quite ready to give the exact location, 
but it's a little bit farther south of the existing Odessa Brown, right? Yep, and it's going to be more accessible for a lot of families from all over King County. And what do we hope, in addition to better access, to accomplish with this additional Odessa Brown outreach? You know, we've developed, I think, an incredible vision, and some of that is thanks to great leadership like Arlisa Brown, Alicia Bailey, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> on the phone right now taking calls. I wonder where all of these old phones came from. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? That I they think they came from the King basement. I love it. Oh, yeah. it's cool. Yeah. Now my favorite sound is ringing phones. So ringing I hope, phones. I I yeah. Can we tell you once again that the phone number to call, and we'd love your help, 206-987-1061 or toll-free 866-987-1061. Or you can give online at give2.seattlechildrens.org, OBCC special. I know that's kind of big and cumbersome, but you'll get it there. So where will the money go that's raised tonight? How will you use it? Well, really, we're going to be responding to what the community is telling us to do. Uh, we were started by the community, and we've been engaged in the community. We're part of a community that we want to help thrive and grow and see its next generation of kids uh, do whatever their dreams tell them they want to do. So we're going to follow that lead. But that lead is going to take us into um, this idea that you hear over and over again, whole child, supporting whole families, enabling whole communities to kind of shine. That's our work. And can I also say that Dr. Danielson is out in the community everywhere, every day, all the time, building out the presence of Odessa Brown in the community. So thank you for that. Thank you for all you and the staff uh, oh. of other doctors and nurses are doing at Odessa Brown. It's such a privilege. What we learn so often is that um, when you're trying to solve some of the bigger challenges that happen in the communities, it's those communities that have all of the answers that have all of the right things to do. And we have another answer coming in on the phone right now. Ben. Oh, great. So, Jim? We just got some great news from Ray Hecox, our old boss, Gene, and Cynthia Huffman. They would like to donate $1,000 to be matched for the next two minutes. Hit it, Isaac. So for the next two minutes, let's, uh, let's cost Ray and Cynthia a little money here, all in, a, all in good fun for Odessa Brown Children's Clinic, all to go to a great cause. Thank you so much for your generosity, and please, We'd love to hear from more of you at 206-987-1061. Jean? All right, Jim, thank you. And to Ray and Cynthia, thank you very much for your constant support of Seattle Children's and Odessa Brown Children's Clinic. And I know that they're leading the charge along with you yeah. to uh, help us build out the clinic farther south. That's really special to know that there are people out there who support us so much. You have these times when it feels like we're all kind of in our silos and we're all separated and you have this chance to do something, you know? to make a statement about who we are as a community, to sort of name what our values are, and to kind of step out there and say, you know, we care about each other, we're inclusive, we, we embrace each other, and uh, we care most about the future of our kids. That's what it's all about, isn't it's it? It's all about the kids, the, ki the kids themselves, and because the kids are our future. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one more uh, time, I want to mention the phone numbers that you can call, 206-987-1061 or toll-free 866-987-1061. So one of the things that, that strikes me so much about Odessa Brown is it's unique in this community, but it's really a shining star that other communities across the country are looking at. As we go look at best practices elsewhere, yeah. we find out that some of the best practices anywhere in the country are right here at Odessa Brown. We want to make smart investments, smart investments all the way through. And so we've been looking at other sites across the country to see what they're doing well, what we can learn from them, and maybe what we be, might be able to teach them about better care in the community, more inclusive care that really looks at the fundamental and social determinants that affect health. So call now. We have 30 seconds left in this program. So call right now. Again, the numbers are 206-987-1061 or 866-987-1061. Jim, thanks for your hard work on oh, the phone. You bet, Jean. Dr. Danielson, thanks oh, for your thank hard you. work 24-7. Thank you to everybody. This has just been an, another whole, amazing team effort. We're yeah, gonna it's keep a good the, group, isn't it? We're going to keep the phones going, so feel free to call in. As long as you keep calling, we'll keep being there for you. Yeah, and we're going to go big away. Big round of applause. We for